understood from the government side. Second, we are adding some of the policies from the government what is coming by next two years. What is our ask with the governance? Already some points will be added by Nitin also. Last is the uh, our four responsibilities that is coming to the, the sustainable procurement team that is coming with environmental steward. So E, H and S. So that is coming with the economic development and with the innovation in the supply chain. Next, uh, coming to the strength and improved supply risk. So Nitin will add on this. Uh, I'm audible. Okay. So, uh, since morning we are discussing about the supplier relationship, strengthening relationship with the suppliers, and strategic partnership. Many times we hear so many things about all these lines. We all are procurement professionals. I'm also like you, working for last so many decades in this sector. And I work with electronics giant companies uh, and now with the construction company. Over a period of last three plus decades, I have found that we as a larger company or working on a larger volumes and larger sales, we try to sometimes uh, dictate our terms to the small entrepreneurs. Because I also work with the MSME sector very closely. I know the pain areas where these people are finding it difficult to really cope up with this strategic partnership terminology, what we say and what we discuss here in this forum. So actually, uh, to my uh, viewpoint, I would say uh, as a pro procurement professional, we should really go in detail to understand what exactly is this partnership really mean meant for those people whom, with whom we work day in and out. A small entrepreneur supplying raw materials to us has to be a real partner to us. Here it is not the case. We may discuss, but in real terms, he might not be having the same meaning what we have about him as a strategic partner. Correct? So how do we do that? We are involving him in every discussion. We are calling him for the negotiations. We are discussing with him. We are trying to discuss so many things with him about the contract how he is getting, going to get benefit of after this contract and so on and so on. But real terms, mein, whether he is getting that benefit, what we have visualized to him lies the question mark to me as a professional. Uh, I started my career with an uh, electronic giant called Shark Corporation, a Japanese company. And I was fortunate enough to have a boss, a Japanese boss. and. Uh, at a very young age, he um, gave me good knowledge about treating the supplier not only as a supplier, but as an equal partner. At a very, very young age, things right. were made very clear to me how we think about the supplier. And certain things are very, very different here in Indian context as compared to the Japanese context. They see a supplier as an equal partner, whereas we see him as a supplier, a vendor. We never do a partnership analysis. We do a supplier analysis. We do vendor rating. We don't do partner rating. We need to consider him as an equal partner because he is the one who is helping us to improve our business and our bottom lines. Right? So from that point of view, we as a procurement professionals need to now change. We need to quickly change because we all are quite pretty agile and resilient towards the supply chains as well. So we need to slowly shift our focus from the supply chain towards this taking the suppliers or taking the vendors or these partners together in our business growth or in our business environment. So what do we do is we try to create the communication system with them. Any supplier, if we want to ask them, or if we want to tell them, Ki bhai, we have developed an application, now you need to integrate with us. The first thing he will ask us, sir, mujhe kya milega? Correct? You also represent a small uh, or a big enterprise. The question remains, who will bear the cost? 
a small application will cost between 1.25 to 5 lakh rupees. Plus the development cost and the running cost is different. So we need to understand the channel of communication that we are trying to impose on him. Being a very multinational company, really whether it is going to help him or not. And if it is not going to help him, probably he will not help us to get this the app integrated with us. Right? Then we need to have a very healthy communication. Here I would say uh, the, the point number four, learn to listen and listen to learn from the suppliers. Major, major change we need to bring into our ideologies and concepts so far as professionals are concerned. We need to be very professional from this aspect because we are not ready to learn from the suppliers internally. Because we, as I, as I said, being on a, working on a very large scale, we try to dominate the supplier. Correct? So that should not be the case. Now is the time that we need to change then data-driven decisions. Of course, we all procurement professionals are working with the dashboards and we take decisions on the data that is reaching out from the uh, devices. Treat every supplier, contractor, driver, etc. as an equal partner. That is the point that I was stressing upon. And it, it really, I mean, it's, uh, it is in my blood. So I, I all the time uh, promote this concept to treat every driver, even uh, we need to give him uh, tea, water, everything, in our, uh, whenever he reaches to our factory or at our workplace. Then create trustworthy business environment. That is very much needed in the present scenario. Now, how will we develop this? Can anybody tell me how are we going to develop a trustworthiness with the suppliers? Kya ka nesna bhaase loga? Okay. <laughs> with respect to? Nahin, bada bada, matlab. What is that supplier expects? From this word, trustworthy. When we commit something, that is what? He expects some payment from us. Ultimate aim is he needs to have the payment in time. Timely payment. Correct? Apart of the payment, wo kya chata hai? what is that he is expecting from us? As a procurement professional or as a procurement guy? Yeah. So, I'll uh, try to merge two, three points together. The quick response from the procurement professionals. Many times in many companies, whenever I go for a training program, I find the procurement professionals are not equipped to handle a phone call coming out from the supplier for payment because he or she is not having the right information with him. Payment come milega? I'll just check and I'll revert back. Matter ends. Wo supplier bait hai, 700 kilometer dur. Or he might be in Bangladesh or he might be in Kuwait. He's asking for some feedback and we are not able to right. respond in time. So quick response and that to correct response matters a lot being a procurement professional. Next. Yeah. So uh, I'll stress upon adding value to the chain. Adding value to the chain is not a new concept in supply chain. But uh, adding value in these aspects matters a lot for us to be a professional. You and me will be recognized in the market only if we add value from these aspects. Aap dekhe, aap ke jitne bhi supplier hai, aap kabhi bhi puchhe, you ask them, how will you rate us? As we rate those suppliers, you need to ask them, how will you rate us? And what is the criteria that they have with them? Like we have some criteria, 18, 20 criteria to rate these suppliers. We need to have those feedback from them how is, how is the supplier rating us as a customer? And probably if we have these ideologies, these concepts very, very clear in our thought process and getting reflected into our actions, probably the supplier will get really amalgamated, collaborated in real terms with us. That is my way of looking at this. Next. Next. Yeah. <clears throat> so perfect, well, uh, well, uh, communication with from the Nitin side. I think I added all both the points. But when we are just thinking about this uh, topic, new strategy for the procurement. So what comes in our mind? So our mind is just thinking that what nowadays today's 
a buyer and the procurement leaders are asking or the searching from the market. So their demands are only three. One, can we place the order with the complete and uh, clear quantity? Can we commit to the supplier on the payment what they are asking for? Or are we aligning the both uh, mutual agreed payment terms? Third, delivery should be timing, uh, time, uh, delivery timeline should be proper and with respect to the clear technical quality. Because already they are, they have worked on the T1 and L1, so they have to come forward. So, they, so already we have dis discussed in the morning uh, on the same that what could we add new to the new age procurement strategy. So first thing comes in our mind that complete data transparency between we all of us. All of us means in the internal CFT with respect to the buyer, clear discussion with the supplier. What market is already a small market is there, open market is there. Each and everyone is connected with the individual competitors and the suppliers and the other team members. So they can easily, they can easily trace your prices and other things. So transparency with your uh, suppliers, your partners, your vendors and convince on the complete clear thoughts. Delivery timeline should be clear, supply quantity should be clear and the payment terms should be clear. And that should be obeyed by the both end. So that should be the transparency comes in the new procurement age strategy. In the same thing, we have some of the stages of procurement cycle what's, which is already common for all. We are not giving you any new things. But as we forgot the, some of the things, so identification of the business needs, what we are searching for. If I am going to buy solar modules, so we have to be completely ready with the film, uh, voltage levels, their voltage of the modules, delivery from the, uh, delivery from the supplier ends with respect to the project site locations. So clarity of all the things. Then purchase request and approvals. The same PR is coming into the market. That uh, PR into the buyers, to the buyers. So PR raised to the buyers the, and approvals properly. So that should be the SLA aligned. SLA should not be misguiding. So service level agreement.